over the last few months, Google has done a lot to improve their Google Meet platform. We're going to take a few minutes. We're going to go over some of those updates and make sure that everybody knows how to use them. So one thing we want to make sure that we're doing as teachers is when we're having students join our Google Meet is making sure that they're using the Google Meet link that's provided in the Google Classroom. You should see this as a teacher right up here in the banner for your Google Classroom. Uh, the students will see it in the same place. If for some reason it's not turned on, instead of seeing this icon here, you would see a little eyeball with a line through it. In order to turn that on, just go to your settings, scroll down to where it says Meet. You get to see your Google Meet link, and then you get to see whether or not you've made that link visible to students. We want to see this slider turned blue here. If it's gray like you see here, that means that it's off for students. And on the home page, um, they would they would not be able to see that for that particular Google Classroom. If you do make changes in here, make sure that you hit the save button here so that those changes take effect. So for teachers, one of the things you may notice when you're on your PC is when you get to the meeting landing page for your specific Google Meet, you will notice down here that there is a background blur option. So the background blur option, what it'll do is it will try to blur out the background that exists around your body, your head or your, your head and your shoulders. If, however, your background is pretty busy with lots of things like pictures and other colors, you may get a message that says that the background blur cannot be turned on. So uh, just keep that in mind. Google now provides more control for the hosts of meetings. Down here, we have a blue shield with a lock on it. When you click on this, it'll open up your meeting safety control panel. There are three things in here that we can adjust. Quick access. Quick access allows hosts of the meetings to uh, determine how participants will be able to join the meeting. By default, with this turned on, anyone with the link to the meeting in the organization will be able to get into the meet. With this turned off, now anybody that wants to join into the meet, whether they're in the organization or not, when they go to join, the meeting host will get a prompt that a participant would like to join, and the host will just need to accept that. So you can turn this on and off during your meeting. You may want to turn it, keep it turned on to start your meeting, and as all of your participants or your students are in the meet, you can then go ahead and turn this off to prevent anybody uh, from randomly being able to join your meet. Hosts also have the ability to control who's allowed to share their screen. By default, that is on. You can turn that off if you would like it so that participants cannot share their screens. Sending chat messages is another meeting control. You can turn that on or off. Sending chat messages is also can also control it the host can also control it up here in the chat section turning it off or on one of the other things to note down here in the lower left corner is your nickname that you're using for your meet um, if you're using your google classroom uh, link which you should be you'll probably notice it's not really a word it's just a bunch of letters but that is the nickname being used for the meet at the time that you're running it. So if you open this up, one of the things you can get is you can get the details for the meeting. Um, but another handy thing is the attachments. So if you share things like a Jamboard or um, other things during the meeting, those things will be shown here as attachments. So down here in the present now section, this is what allows you to present content to your students. Not much has changed in here, but just a quick review of what is in here. So you get three options. You can share your entire screen, which in this case, I on, I'm only using one screen. That's my laptop screen. So that's the only choice that I have. This presents the entire screen from corner to corner. Now, if I had a projector hooked up and I was using my projector as an extended uh, monitor, then I would actually see a second screen here and I could choose from either one. In this case, I would just pick this screen and I would hit share and then my students will see everything that's on my desktop. The other option that you have is to present a window. 
In this case, a window is, is simply your Chrome window. It presents everything that's in Chrome. Now, the window contains one, two, three tabs. So just remember, these are tabs, not windows. So I would pick the window that I want and hit share. Now, this doesn't show anything that's going on in my on my desktop. So if I have my email running, no pop-ups for my emails will appear into this uh, because I'm only sharing content from my Chrome window or my Chrome application. And then lastly, there's the tab share. Now tab share is really good when you want to share just one tab in your Chrome window. And it really is designed uh, for if you have audio that's in that tab. So in this case, I have a a YouTube tab you can see up here opened up and I, I'm going to play that YouTube video for my students both in a classroom and remote and I want the remote students to be able to hear that so I click on it and I hit share and now as I when I hit play you'll notice that there's a little blue rectangle on this tab indicating for me that this is the tab that's being shared in the meet and that this is the audio, this is, the, you know, this tab, uh, the audio coming from this tab is getting shared. Now, if at any point I want to switch that, um, I can go to a different tab and then you'll notice here it says sharing YouTube, this tab. But if I want to share this tab instead, I can click on that. And at any point that I want to stop sharing that tab, I just hit stop and I go back to my meet and I'm done sharing that. So that's the three different options for the present now where you want to share content with your students. Now we just want to take a look in our Google Meet settings, look into some of these options. Here you see a, a large list of things. This, this list has grown since uh, over the last few months. You can see here that at the very top, Google has incorporated the use of their Jamboard software into the Google Meets that allows teachers or students to uh, turn on a Jamboard and share it within the meet. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit open a Jamboard. I may have one already started, which is fine. I can choose that from my drive or I can just hit start a new board. You see here it says creating a Jamboard. It's letting me know that all of these people who are all in this meet will have access. Five people will have access to view it. I could give all five of them access to edit this, which depending upon what you're doing with your students, that's what you may want to do. And then I'll go ahead and send. Now, the Jamboard pops up for me. The way that the students get that Jamboard access is they're going to go to their chat and they're going to see a link to the Jamboard listed here. That's what they'll click so that they can get access to that. So once the Jamboard's open, it becomes a collaborative space for students and teachers to work together. You'll start to see your students appearing here like we do see on uh, other Google uh, applications like Google Docs or Google Slides. Um, and then you can go ahead and, you know, use that Jamboard. Now, the Jamboard will be linked also in your attachments right here. So that's handy if students come in uh, later in the class after you have posted the link. They can go over to attachments and they can pull up that Jamboard. And sometimes teachers may use multiple Jamboards in their session. And all of those Jamboard links would be shown here as attachments. Changing layout, though. This is something that's been developed um, over the last few months, kind of replacing the need for extensions. Um, so in here, we can change the layout, and this is going to allow us to uh, you know, take the tile view that we have here and uh, adjust the how many tiles we show all at once. We can really slide this up, going up to 50 displayed at a time. Of course, that will decrease the size of the individual tiles. Um, if you have smaller classes, you can, um, you know, reduce those those tiles, the number of tiles, and that will increase the size of each individual one. Spotlight, what Spotlight does is it basically focuses in on anybody that's speaking or presenting content. And Sidebar gives you all of, most all of your students uh, stacked along the side with um, the Spotlight which is the person talking or presenting content, taking up the larger space. Also see in here, uh, background blur, that's something that's new. Um, background blur, again, is, is only really gonna work on uh, the teacher laptops. Uh, we're not seeing this yet on student Chromebooks. And again, it, it only works well if you uh, 
have a close up if you're close to the camera and you don't have a whole lot of um, things in the background. Go to settings, to dig down in a little bit more. Uh, we have noise cancellation in here. Uh, that's going to allow you to uh, help to reduce any background noise that may be going on in a Google Meet. So if students have a lot of background noise, they can turn on noise cancellation and hopefully that can help to filter some of that out. Um, video, uh, not a lot's changed in here. Just remember that if you know students have a poor uh, internet connection, they can adjust their video resolution settings. You know, the receiving resolution, and they can take that down to a 360p, which is going to take up essentially half the amount of bandwidth needed to, to deliver that quality of video. Um, they can also reduce their, their send quality lower as well, which would reduce the need for bandwidth as well. So for those students that have poor internet connections, they may want to uh, modify some of those settings. Here's just another place to go to get to your host controls. We saw those host controls down in this lower left section here, along with, you know, the chat message controls embedded in our chat window as well. Um, so just another place to find those settings. Another feature that Google just came out with, a, a highly requested feature for Google Meets, is the ability to take your participants and break them out into smaller groups to have smaller video chats. So you can get to that. Um, we'll look up here on our Google Meet ribbon and I'll click on what looks like a triangle, a square, and a circle icon. That will open this up. And here you will see breakout rooms. So we'll go ahead and click on breakout rooms. Give it a minute to process. It's looking at how many participants we have. And if we look here, we can decide how many rooms we want. Okay. So let's say I want three rooms. Uh, in the main room, I will stay there. I am the meeting host, so I will stay in the main room. Breakout room one, I can rename it if I'd like. I can change it to um, anything I want. I can do the same for breakout room two, and breakout room three if I'd like. Now you can see that it auto shuffled people into here, but what I can do is I can say, um, I would rather have um, you know this participant in this room and move this participant down to that room. So you have the ability to shuffle uh, participants like that. Now when you're ready, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit create. And then what it's doing is it is telling everybody what breakout room they're gonna go to and they are leaving the main room and they are heading out into those breakout rooms. So you can see it's processing that here right now. As those participants are in those rooms, we'll see their names go from uh, shaded names like we see here to bold uh, full color names there. So we can see uh, this participant has joined into there, still waiting on this participant to join into this breakout room. Um, that's how that works there. So if you would like to go into any of those individual breakout rooms, you just simply hit join and then it will enter you into that breakout room. You'll be leaving the main room and then you will be brought in and you'll be able to work with the participants that are in this room. So we'll give this a minute to load up. You'll see all three participants in here. You still have the host controls. You're the host of the main room and the breakout rooms. So when you're all done working in the breakout room that you're in and you want to go to another one uh, or leave and just go back to the main room, you can just hit leave or like I said, you can hit join to jump into different rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and hit leave. It tells me I'm returning to the main room. You can see there's already one user in this main room. Go to my participants list here. Go over to my breakout rooms uh, icon here. When I'm ready to end the breakout rooms, what I can do is I can hit end breakout rooms and students and part participants will get a message that pops up telling them that they need to return to the main room. They will hit the return button. 
and then everybody will um, come back into this room. Come back here, go out of breakout rooms, go to participants. You can see I have all my participants back here in the main room. Another new feature that you'll see here in this new section of Google Meets here in the activities section is polls. So polls are a nice way to, to go ahead and collect some feedback from your participants. Um, pretty basic polling tool. So we'll go ahead and hit start a poll. We'll ask a question. And then when I'm ready to put that poll out to my participants, I will go ahead and hit launch. And now students will, or my participants will be prompted to respond to this poll. And as the poll responses are coming in, I will get to see those things live here. When I'm done collecting the poll responses, I can decide whether or not I feel it's appropriate to share the results with the group. Names will remain anonymous in here, but uh, I'll hit show everyone the results. And then they get to see on their screen um, what the, the poll results were, and it can be uh, a good talking point for the meeting. And when I'm done with the poll, I'll go ahead and end the poll. And uh, I can create new polls if I want, simply by hitting create poll and create my question and my response choices. At the end of this meeting, since I am the host, I'm going to receive an email that contains a spreadsheet with my uh, roster. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, end here. So once the meet has ended, all students are gone. A few minutes after, the host will get a an email that contains a spreadsheet showing in the spreadsheet when the students joined and the time that they exited, how long they were in the meeting, uh, their name, and then their email associated with their account. In addition to your attendance roster, you'll also get the results of your polls in that same email. These polls can be opened through your drive. The results of the poll will show the name of the participant and how they responded.